Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Newen. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of New South Wales, and today I'll be talking about how non small cell lung cancer is treated in Sydney. So, lung cancer remains the most common and most lethal cancer in the world. Patients with stage 1 and 2 non small cell lung cancer have localised tumours that are potentially curable. Radiotherapy is an alternative for surgery for these patients who are medically inoperable or refuse surgery. However, there is variation seen in the use of curative radiotherapy, with some patients receiving palliative radiotherapy or no treatment. Curative treatment rates for stage 1 and 2 non-small cell lung cancer vary internationally, between about a half to three quarters and for inoperable patients, the curative radiotherapy rate varies between um, one third and a half. The reasons behind this variation are known and may be due to patient or clinician factors. Stereotactic ablative body radiotherapy, or SABRE, is a newer method of delivering precise high dose radiation in a limited number of fractions. However, eligibility for this treatment depends on tumor size and location. The primary aims of this, of this study were to document radiotherapy patterns of care for early stage non-small cell lung cancer in Sydney and to evaluate reasons for palliative rather than curative treatment. A secondary aim was to identify the proportion of patients who would be suitable for SABRE treatment. Electronic oncology databases at three institutions were queried to retrieve data on patients with stage one or two non-small cell lung cancer who were seen at a radiation oncology clinic between 2008 and 2014 and who did not receive surgery. The three institutions, Liverpool MacArthur Cancer Therapy Centre, Prince of Wales Cancer Therapy Centre and St George Cancer Care Centre are all, th are all public facilities located in Sydney. Data collected included patient demographics, tumour, treatment and outcome details. The simplified comorbidity score is a score that adds up weighted comorbidities and was determined using past medical records. Curative radiotherapy was defined by a minimum of 50 grays for conventional and 48 grays for the SABRE. Suitability for SABRE was defined as peripheral tumours less than five centimetres in patients with T1 to 2, N0, M0 disease. Analysis was performed using SPSS statistics. Univariate and multivariate analysis were used to determine factors associated with curative radiotherapy. Now to the results. The 312 patients included in analysis, the median age was 77, 77 years and 64% were male. Differences were noted between the institution populations, including tumour histology, ECOG performance status, um, simplified comorbidity score and po pulmonary comorbidity. Gender age, age distribution stage were similar. <coughs> now treatment was curative radiotherapy in 57%, palliative radiotherapy in 19%, and no radiotherapy in 24% of patients. Variation was seen in the use of curative radiotherapy between institutions, ranging from 43% at Liverpool MacArthur to 81% at St George. There was variation in the method of delivery of curative radiotherapy. The SABRE to non-SABRE ratio is a ratio of SABRE to conventional radiotherapy use. The overall ratio was 0 0.33. The use of SABRE was lowest at St George and highest at Prince of Wales. We compared patterns of care between two separate time periods. We picked 2012 because this was the year when widespread SABRE use began at these institutions. Use of curative radiotherapy increased from 51% during 2008 to 2011 to 64% from 2012 to 2014. With a corresponding decrease in the use of palliative radiotherapy by about half. The 
the proportion of patients receiving no treatment was identical. The main reasons for receiving palliative or no treatment was chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or poor pulmonary function. Patient preference was comprised 11% of reasons, and other reasons included logistical factors, such as the patient being unable to lie flat, disease progression, and physician preference. We also analyzed factors associated with curative radiotherapy use. On both univariate and multivariate analysis, the method of diagnosis, simplified comorbidity score, ECOG performance status, FEV1 percentage, institution, and time period were all significantly associated. In the subgroup of patients with T1 to 2, N0, M0 non-small cell lung cancer, those suitable for SABRE based on tumor size and, and location include 32% who received palliative radiotherapy and approximately half who received no treatment as well as conventional radiotherapy. About a third of patients who received no treatment and a fifth of those who underwent radi palliative radiotherapy were also technic oh, sorry, clinically SABRE for SABRE, so cl clinically suitable for SABRE, as defined as having an ECOG performance status between zero and two. Now, my apologies in advance for this next slide. There are only three published Australian studies that documented patterns of care in early stage non-small cell lung cancer. Our results fit in at a 57% curative treatment rate among 56%, 33%, which is the one just cut out below, and 73% at the bottom. Box et al. reported the highest curative rate, but this was in a highly selected population whose management was only discussed at MDT. The lowest included stage three patients, and ours looked at patients who did not receive surgery. Overall, the literature, do, literature does show variation in the Australian treatment patterns. To our knowledge, this is the first radiotherapy patterns of care study for inoperable stage one and two patients in Australia and outside North America. Use of curative radiotherapy for these patients varied between countries, one third in Canada and half in the US and in ours. The Canadian study by Smith et al was before the introduction of SABRE, which may explain its lower rate. Despite guidelines recommending curative radiotherapy for these patients, only one third to half of these patients received this treatment. Although Smith et al suggested that this is likely due to patient factors, such as poor performance status, older age, and poor general condition, we found that institutional factors also play a role. Like in ours, variation between institutions was also reported in Vale et al's study. According to the authors of this study, institutional variation could be due to a downstream effect in variations of surgical practice and preference sensitive care. The practice of surgeons from different institutions could lead to differences in the type of patients left for consideration of surgery in terms of comorbidities, lung function and age. Variation in the use of surgery has been reported between institution types. However, we tried to take this into account in our multivariate analysis. <clears throat> Management for early stage non-small cell lung cancer is complex, often requiring discussion at MDT. Patients are given many legitimate treatment options that, um, which offer significant benefits and trade-offs. Many patients commonly dele delegate decision-making to clinicians, and th this therefore may lead, may lead to variations tr in treatment through recommendations based on subjective opinion. In our study, treating institution was significantly associated with the use of curative radiotherapy after controlling for other factors, suggesting evidence of clinician bias. This is also the first study to evaluate the suitability of patients for SABRE. The implementation of SABRE has resulted in an increased proportion of patients receiving curative radiotherapy. 
The shorter fractionation schemes are more convenient for the elderly population with comorbidities. Since the introduction of Sabre, curative radiotherapy use has increased. We found that a third of those who re received no treatment and a fifth of those who received palliative radiotherapy were both clinically and technically suitable for Sabre. Increased utilisation of this method in suitable patients has a potential to improve survival in non-small cell lung cancer. Introduction of Sabre did change radiotherapy practice, but it did not increase radiotherapy use in patients who did not receive any treatment. The reasons for this are unknown, although patient preference was a more important factor in this group. The limitations of this study include its retrospective nature, the fact that all three institutions were from public uh, metropolitan hospitals and the self-reporting of comorbidity scores. In conclusion, the use of curative radiotherapy varied between cancer institutions. Patient factors were the predominant reason for palliative treatment. Treating institution was also important. A significant proportion of patients who were treated with palliative intent were suitable for Sabre treatment. Thank you everyone for your attention. I'd like to now open it up for questions.